Mystic of the Sands replied to my uh, previous video concerning nihilism and perspectivism uh, with an interesting quote from Sextus Empiricus, who was writing about other philosophers, Pyronism, I guess. And um, <clears throat> he left an interesting quote. Uh, he's, Mystic of the Sands has really pursued this issue, and I don't really think I was doing him justice in my other videos, so I'm just sort of going to go back to the, what he writes and see if I can keep up. <laughs> um, here's Sextus. When people are investigating any subject, the likely result is either a discovery or a denial of, a, of discovery and a confession of if in, inapprehensibility. A denial of discovery and a confession of inapprehensibility. I presume those are in brackets. Um, or else a continuation of the investigation. Three options, I guess. This, no doubt, is why in the case of philosophical investigations, too, some have said that they have discovered the truth, some have asserted that it cannot be apprehended, and others are still investigating. Those who are called dogmatists, in the proper sense of the word, think that they have discovered the truth. Ephilists, in my opinion, or, you know, those are the ones that are closest to the circle I operate in that say this is the truth. For example, the schools of Aristotle and Epicurus and the Stoics, and some others. The schools of Clytomachus and Carneades and other academics have asserted that things cannot be apprehended. And the skeptics are still investigating. Hence, the most fundamental kinds of philosophy are reasonably thought to be three. The dogmatic, the academic, and the skeptical. Um, sounds good so far, but, you know, when I'm inclined on first glance to sort of say, yes, I agree with uh, the skeptics because I'm still looking. However, truth and perspectivism. Hmm. Nietzsche once uh, quipped famously, suppose truth is a woman. I think we know what he would have meant by that in the typical 19th century sexist terms. Uh, he was pretty sexist, if you ask me. Um that say truth is something that's utterly different from one moment to the next and looks completely different from one person to another. I think that's you know the implication and that's perspectivism, isn't it? There is no one right way to apprehend the truth. So am I really a skeptic if I'm sort of a person who uses what I just consider the tool of perspectivism to unbreak a lot of log jams. Um, am I saying that uh, tr things cannot be apprehended? No, I guess that's the academic. Um, because, you know, a, a perspectivist might say that, sure, I can discover all kinds of truths w in terms of my understanding of truths, but they just might not be truths to anybody else. That doesn't mean that there is no truth. It's an interesting kind of fluidity, I guess, of truth, where the fluidity is the constant. <laughs> Pantarai, of course, Heraclitus. Um, and fluidity could mean any number of things. Your point of view changes from one second to the next, or one year to the next, or one decade to the next. Um, but points of view change also among uh, different beings, different people. Um, reality looks very different to me than it would to say a uh, African subsistence farmer. Um, our entire experience of the world is going to be radically different. Um, my experience of reality is very different from someone living in medieval Byzantium. Um, the, almost, one could almost say the universe that I inhabit is different because all the assumptions that this guy would have placed on reality, um, i.e. Christianity in the case of the Byzantine, and all that flows from that and dogmatism and Christianity, um, he would have had a certain amount of certainty, which I, I do not have, nor do I particularly care if I don't have. Um, I guess we could say somebody in Saudi Arabia's mind might work like that, uh, that they have reality, and anyone who's denying it is simply wrong, and who cares? But the skeptical, again, the skeptical who is still looking, but what if, <laughs> say from a perspectivist point of view, um, You've said that there's essentially an infinite number of ways to perceive just about anything. That's not really a denial of truth. It's not a denial of reality, and it's certainly not a denial of truth. 
It's just truth in and of itself is by nature affected by the perspective, by what's already, by what is perceiving things. And now, still looking would assume that you you think that you're going to find an absolute truth at you know the end of the rainbow here. As I go, you know, the longer I look, eventually I'll find something. Well, what if you're looking at reality itself from a perspectivist point of view? There is no conclusive reality, but there's an infinite number of contextual realities. Um, it's not the same thing as either keeping looking, like still looking for the truth, even though I haven't found it yet, which kind of looks like the way I uh, operate. A lot of people say, well, you, you never believe in anything. You're so slippery. We can't nail you down to anything. What the hell are you talking about? Well, it's just perspectivism in action or anekantavada in action. Um, but even, as I say, perspectivism ends up being a constant, even in a completely changing universe, paradox, you know, that's another video, I suppose. But it's not the same thing as saying that you've discovered a truth, that there is no truth, or that you're still looking. What would you call that? And it's not nihilism, in my opinion, either. In fact, I would say it's almost the exact opposite of nihilism. Instead of saying um, nothing is real or nothing is um, has any value, I would say everything is real. Everything has value. That's almost a, what perspectivism is, is implying, I, I think. So it's not even nihilism. It's a sort of a tool or a point of view. Perspectivism really is, unfortunately, another point of view. Um, it's a point of view, I guess, that says that it's not so much that things can't be apprehended or that they can. It's just that there are so many ways in which things can be apprehended and thus, it's very difficult to know when you've actually apprehended the truth, even if you have. How would you, let's say that in some strange flash, flash of insight, a, a perspectivist uh, found the ultimate reality in the universe. Well, in order for him to, or her to discover this ultimate reality, uh, you know, this building block of everything, um, it would have to be perceived. But the problem is, perspectivism says that there's a gazillion different ways to perceive everything. So how would you perceive the truth when it can be perceived from infinite perspectives? <laughs> how could you, how could you be the the, the correct perception? How could your view of the ultimate truth be the correct one from the right perspective in a perspectivist context? It, it, that doesn't even to me, boggle the mind in so much as it just sort of opens things up. Um, it sort of says, don't worry, truth might be out there. You may even discover it. You just might not be able to cleave to that discovery in the way you can cleave to other discoveries. You can't relate to it in the same way that you can relate to other discoveries or other truths or whatever you want, facts, whatever you want to uh, call those. Um, because, first of all, everyone is biased. Secondly, you change your own perspective from one second to the next, whether you like it or not. So you may be perceiving the absolute truth in one way, in one sense in one second, then you're perceiving the absolute truth completely differently, but also the absolute truth, it's still the absolute truth, a second later. Um, again, I don't find that mind-boggling. It's in, in fact, in, in many ways, it's the certainty that a lot of people seem to sort of look for in vain in what I'm saying. What doesn't change in all this? No matter how many perspectives there are, what doesn't change? Not even the perspectives. What changes? Something is perceiving this. It doesn't matter if, if what it is perceiving is right or wrong. Uh, in, in terms of trying to establish a fundamental reality here. Um, I may have discovered reality, and I may be continually re-perceiving it from different perspectives, and I may be unable to actually communicate with anybody, or even draw from memory my perspectives on truth from the past, or project into the future what my perspectives might be. That is not the same thing as nihilism. It's not uh, skepticism, even. 
because it's kind of saying that there may not be a way to perceive truth even if truth does exist so searching for truth kind of is a in a sense a waste of time um, nor is it um, an academic point of view which says nothing can be uh, apprehended because that in itself is a truth statement and it's one perspective isn't it um, so what would you call that what would you call a perspectivist point of view I just I guess you just call it a perspectivist point of view because you, there's there's really no other there's no way that you can sort of slot it in with any other sort of view on things it's the view that's attempting to encompass all possible views um, and not with the aim of even disproving anything <laughs> not with the aim of trying to establish any solid facts um, just as a means of widening one's vision as much as possible um, instead of I guess the nihilistic view as I've said it says everything is valueless the perspectivist point of view almost says that everything has value as I, as I said before and it's sort of a view that respects all possible points of view not in terms of moral uh, points of view i.e. if I say that I respect all possible points of view it doesn't mean that I respect the views of the people who ran Auschwitz what I'm saying is, I'm saying, uh, or what I'm saying is, the perspective has to be taken into consideration of that person. It's not that I'm saying that that person is right. What I'm saying is that perspective exists and is part of the overall picture of the perceptions of reality. Uh, that everything that presumably has life does. Everything that is conscious perceives. So it's not nihilism. It's not solipsism either, because it would just say solipsism is simply one of many perspectives, one of possibly an infinite number of perspectives. Um, so yeah, that's that's just um, one paragraph of his previous video. This video has turned into a bit of a ramble, I'm afraid, and I've lost my train of thought a couple of times. But uh, the whole idea of nihilism, solipsism, and perspectivism, I think those three kind of fit together neatly in kind of a compare and contrast sort of schema. Um, can really get your mind going, especially if you engage in anything like, you know, uh, circumspective like meditation or whatever like I do, when you can sort of try and force yourself, or not force yourself, but get yourself to think about certain concepts for extended periods of time. Um, going into perspectivism can really blow the mind in that uh, <laughs> in that uh, kind of lifestyle uh, and I meditate a lot and when I do oftentimes it is basically perspectivism uh, applied to just about everything um, and again you just sort of ideas of true and false and identity and everything start to really fall apart at that point um, but again it's not so frightening it's almost as though you're being forced to look at things for what they actually are. It's the closest thing I can imagine to actually being in the moment in Pyro's information stream, where everything is coming at you at once, and it's all correct. <laughs> or I shouldn't say correct, but it's all valid. Every Everything that's coming into your information stream is valid, at least to somebody or from some perspective or other. Um, tends to blow the mind, but, you know kind of fun getting your mind blown in that way. <laughs>